Now, social media has changed the way we communicate, both in our personal and work lives, but it's meant our opinions are open to the scrutiny of strangers. A number of people have been prosecuted after their posts on Facebook and Twitter fell foul of the law. In some cases, they've even been sent to prison. So lawyers are meeting today to discuss new guidance issued to prosecutors on the issue, and our correspondent Chris Buckler has been looking at it. The internet is regarded as a place for free speech and conversation but sometimes your words can get you in trouble. Many were arrested during the riots in England 18 months ago, held account for violence and vandalism. But one of the longest sentences was handed down to someone who was never on these streets. Perry Sutcliffe Keenan invited others to riot on Facebook. He made the page when he was drunk and removed it the next morning, even apologizing. But he was jailed for four years for inciting public disorder. The sentence was a very harsh sentence. I mean, it's not just Perry who's saving it. His family are. So, very, very raw. Not four years. It's killed everybody. Absolutely killed everybody. And we're still not over it. The sentencing was put under scrutiny in an appeal hearing and upheld. Members of the legal profession insist that existing laws can deal with new technology. As a magistrate there's been realistic sentencing but it's much harder to differentiate fact or intention with the written word than with the spoken word so yes it's a much harder job as far as the magistracy is concerned. Decisions on whether to send a case to court can also be controversial. Clearly offensive tweets sent to the diver Tom Daly, for example, were not judged to reach the standard needed to become a crime. And that question of when somebody should be prosecuted is currently being debated. In December, new guidelines for cases involving social media were introduced and they're open for public consultation for the next month. However, Keir Stormer, the Director of Public Prosecutions, has already said that he believes that if somebody posts something offensive online but then takes it down quickly afterwards, then they shouldn't necessarily end up in a courthouse. Mr Stormer warned that if there are too many investigations and too many cases coming to court, then that can have a chilling effect for free speech. It cracks me up that um, he comes out as, uh, as wanting to say, oh, be careful. Keir Stormer's decision to prosecute Paul Chambers has become notorious and in part led to this review. There were four anti-terror police. They asked me to confirm my name, which I did, and then he held out a hard copy of my, of my tweet and said I was being arrested under uh, anti-terror legislation. He was initially found guilty of sending a menacing tweet because he joked that he'd blow Robin Hood Airport sky high if his plane was delayed. After two appeals, he was cleared. But what became known as the Twitter joke trial cost him his job. We should be evolved enough that we were able to read different levels of, um, of meaning in a text. I mean, if we didn't, literature would be dead. Police and prosecutors will continue to keep a close watch on social media. And they've made clear that words, as well as actions, will still count as crime. Chris Buckler, BBC News. Well, we're going to talk to uh, John Cooper about this. He's a barrister who specialises in human rights. He represented Paul Chambers, who you just saw who's prosecuted in the Twitter joke trial, as it's become known, and he joins us from our London studio. Very good morning to you. Good morning. Um, just to explain for us, then, the point at which banter on social media, putting a joke out there on Twitter, should become something that is taken seriously by the courts. I, I think what we need to do is to demystify social media and general behaviour in general life. Uh, don't do anything is the watchword. Don't do anything on the social media or say anything on the social media uh, that you wouldn't say in general life. And let's remind ourselves, social media is a relatively new thing. It's only really about six or so years old as far as Twitter and Facebook are concerned. Uh, and people are just getting used to it. So, as I say, common sense is the key here. But John, but John Paul Chambers could easily have said that in real life. I mean, he might even have been, you know, I, I'm not accusing, I'm not saying that he would have done that. Plenty of people, you know, sort of jokingly will say things that they wouldn't possibly dream would land them in court. And when they put it on Twitter, suddenly it seems to become more serious. Well, the problem was the Crown Prosecution Service completely misunderstanding the law as far as Paul was concerned. Because, as you know, I represented Paul mm. uh, in, in that hearing. And what happened there, and I just went a little 
a moment of time, just to put it into context, both the police and the security services were of the view that what Paul had done was a joke and didn't want to prosecute it. And for some reason, the Crown Prosecution Service, uh, backed, it seems, by the Director of Public Prosecutions, wanted to push this prosecution. And it took seven court hearings and many, many hours and thousands of pounds of public money to actually put the Crown Prosecution Service's decision right. So the problem really here, in a nutshell, in my view, is not that the public need guidelines, the public are getting used to social media, mm. but the Crown Prosecution Service need guidelines. And what they've produced is 25 pages, the longest definition of common sense I've ever seen. And John, where does the responsibility of the carrier, uh, the, the organisation through which it, this is written light, it almost feels like that's been forgotten somewhere, because traditionally, I don't know what you would have compared with it before newspapers. The reason they didn't put libelous comments in was because they knew they would be held responsible. Now, how is it that that seems to have disappeared somewhere? Well, I think uh, many of the problems is the carrier seems very remote as far as social media is concerned, but that's changing. The law is getting in touch with this now. And carriers, Twitter, Facebook and others, are actually becoming more and more responsible. And one of the messages I'd like to get out there from working in the legal field of this is don't be afraid to contact the carrier. Don't be afraid to contact people like Twitter and Facebook who actually, when contacted, I've found, are actually quite helpful. Uh, there is a myth that they won't be helpful. Uh, if they're approached in the right way and given the proper request, my experience is that they will actually respond. But the point you're making is right. Newspapers we can touch, feel, we can smell, we can even go where the offices are nowadays and see the actual buildings. The carriers seem remote, but that's changing and I don't think the public should be afraid of that now and they should interface with the carrier. All right, John Cooper, good to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Time now is 8.29 and that means it's time.